Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now to be completely honest, I have already launched a mission to save Bob Kerman from his dreary fate on the MUN. However, the rover that I've built and the distance between the two um, rescue sites, the first rescue site which I've already is down on the moon right now, it is about 20 kilometers away from Crash Site Alpha which is in Kerbal time as well as rover time multiple hours of travel for me alone which doesn't include recharge time for the rover. So, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to trade one Kerbal for another here, and since neither are the faithful Jebediah, I think I'm willing to do such a trade. Now, I have already in launched an endeavor, as I've said before, but the rover is just too darn slow, and it has to recharge about every minute or so, even with the battery packs I put on it. So, I have endeavored to build a brand new Bill Rescuer. Now, as you guys can see, this is a completely different design from what I'm usually doing. So, connected by struts and uh, the structural posts right here, I have four engines that have landing struts on each and every one of them, and instead of strapped to the side, our rover is under our main capsule right here. So, as you can see, this rover has generators of all sorts, solar, as well as these radio thermal generators, and we have plenty of battery packs and an occasional landing strut right here, just to help us in case we get launched or, you know, we run out of... Um, you know, we get stuck or we flip, we should be able to deploy these and we'll be fine with our two generic seats. Now, I'll just demonstrate how these work and the engine or the rocket that we're going to send these on. Now, because of the fact that we are going to strand a Kerbal on the surface of the MUN, I do feel a bit git. Uh, what was that? A bit git? Um, the whole maneuvering I did behind it, I was very naive and I didn't know that you could really do your maneuvers precisely without... Um, in other words, in your map mode, I didn't know you were able to, you know, like do missions and like control your ship and do maneuvers from that mode so I was completely unknowledgeable about that so I'm probably just going to relaunch the maneuver and make it a whole lot more precise but just to show you guys in a nutshell when we deploy the landing gear I think it's a bit shaky for a second and as you can see right here everything is looking good so we just deploy these normal ladders and everything is looking fine um Aline Kerman I think is his name Alan Alan uh, I'm thinking that <laughs> we have ourselves a nice functioning ship here so if we just like um lift up these struts right here because they're not really needed now, um, just all we have to do is decouple. I have a bit of um, a dilemma right here because I have a decouple node right here. It kind of slams it right into the ground and breaks a wheel no matter what. And we have this nice little decoupler right here. So let's just throw a lint out of here. You know, we're just going to drop them down to the ground because, you know, who even cares? Brain trauma is protected by this helmet right here. And as soon as we get on, um, seeing as though every Kerbin... Uh, carries at least 20 spare wheels in his pocket or so it seems you can just repair these wheels without uh, any problem to it I'm really glad that is a thing at this point So you decide repair your wheel and it is good to go and just take a look at our new engineered rover now As you can see there are no lights I do have a reason behind that because if you press L the Kerbins have a light which is the same lum Luminescence as a normal light but consumes no power and is completely um, Unlimited now a little problem I am going to encounter here is I did not even notice this but we are kind of trapped under here because you know our landing strut is a bit stuck but i think we can kind of wheelie it out I, i'm thinking we can try this right here i haven't tested this method yet all right yeah we can get out without an issue and then as soon as we are ready to drive off we just have to decouple the node which exposes the engine so just like if we were to decouple this we can't do it because we're out of the craft right now but um if we we're to do that everything should be fine we'll be left at the surface and i think i'll be able to crawl back up even with uh the bit of a spatial difference so as you guys can see this thing does jet itself around and we have the generators we have our solar panels and this thing should hold plenty of power for the job i think it like regenerates more than it actually loses and seeing as though we are um, exposed to no sun right now let's just go for a bit of a joy ride right now and just demonstrate how well this thing works and i think we lost a wheel we lost a strut oh my well it goes to show you how well made this thing really is all right let's just uh, deploy the gear real quick if that works i guess what was happened to lynn here is he uh, i'm not even sure is he brain dead he looks a bit brain dead right now. Okay, well, that is a bit of a conundrum. Now, before we actually go and save Bill for a, or Bob for a second time, we're just going to craft the ship that's going to get us into that orbit. So, seeing as though we do have our Munlander at the very bottom, we're just going to have to build right on top of it, which is not an issue. However, I've never really done this method before, so if I have a bit of a screw up, like putting this thing on the bottom, is probably not the best idea, but I think we'll be able to move past it nevertheless. 
All right, so let's just build our generic rocket right under it. You know, just like normal, nothing new, no new surprises here. We're just going to build our normal rocket. All right, so let's just get our normal, um, about one or two of these. Let's just get a secondary little tank right here and get our LV liquid engine. I don't usually use the one thrust vectoring right here because it doesn't get as good as thrust as the LV T30. All right, so let's just keep doing these on right here. I just want to make sure I'm keeping you guys in the loop on this entire rescue mission as because, like, I do a lot of this stuff off camera because, I mean, we're jumping. Yeah, I'm taking, like, hours on hours just to take a rover across the surface, and now I am backing out, like, at the last minute. So I feel kind of like I wasted a whole lot of time, which is completely true. But, uh, yeah, that's that's just a fact of life right there. Don't waste time on the MUN if you're not willing to put in the full Monty. So, yeah. <laughs> Your daily Kerbal Space Program advice right here. Alrighty, so let's just get on these radial decouplers right here and strap on some more of these Rocco Max Jumbo Orange Tanks. I just call them the big oranges because, you know, they're big and orange. So, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. Alright, so let's just keep these guys all right together. Oh my, I was trying to click a strut, but obviously the game doesn't like me using struts. Okay, let's try that one more time all right fantastic so let's just strut these guys in and we'll put on some nice little aerodynamic nose caps because everyone loves an aerodynamic no nose cap i was about to say moose cap i've got no idea why <laughs> i always like to use like random words when i'm commentating just because you know that's just me that's my style <laughs> all right so right here let's just do a quick little stage check this is looking good but what are these rocket tanks without rockets under them all right so let's just do this and we'll probably do our asparagus staging as per usual all right so if you don't know what asparagus staging is or you're new to kerbal space program basically you use these fuel lines to transfer fuel into a different uh, fuel line as you can see by the arrows or if it doesn't want to connect as you can see by the arrows right here that directs the fuel flow so if this goes to this and this one goes to over here we'll do our asparagus staging all right so let me just see right here actually you know what that make it an uneven rocket let me scratch that real quick so oh my goodness I, I this is the one issue with Kerbal Space Program is you do seem to grab the wrong nodes quite a lot of the time and you'll get some pretty fun funky, you know, mix-ups, trying to put them back with um, symmetry mode. All right, here we go. That is looking fine and dandy. It's a bit uneven now. I'm going to try and fix that, you know, even though it is pretty tough in Kerbal Space Program. All right, that's looking pretty analogous right there. All right, so let's try this one more time. So getting this stage right here, transferring the fuel, that goes there. So that means this will run out first, so then we will dispatch this tank. So this one will go over here. Oh, yeah, look at this. This asparagus staging is real stuff, guys. <laughs> All right, so once those tanks are filled up, we'll have them go to the center tank so that it will be full of fuel when we decouple these ones right here. All right, looking good, guys. All right, this is looking fantastic. All right, now this does look a bit squirrely at the moment, seeing as though it's just like a big massive hunk of space junk almost. I mean, I know it's more than that. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings so quickly on. Actually, you know what? Something I do need to add is a uh, advanced SAS module. Module? Module. Yeah, there we go. It's not very angry at the moment. <laughs> All right, here we go. So let's just add these in. We should probably put some RCS on here. I'm not usually a big fan of RCS or, you know, aerodynamics for that matter. But, you know, I think just so this fly is, you know, the integrity is really, it's just very... In Integritus? Integritus? <laughs> the integrity of this flight will be unmatched is what I'm trying to get across right here. Alrighty, so let's just find ourselves an RCS tank. I believe, oh, let's just get that big jumbo daddy. Oh, that is a big two jumbo daddy for me, actually, I'm afraid. Alright, so let's just put one of these guys on. Um, uh, where, where should I put this? I should probably put it right about, right on the other side's decoupler, never mind. Um, here, let's just uh, stack it in right here because field transfer is like all the way through, so it won't even be a big deal. All right, so let's do that right there, and these tanks should be good to go, actually. All right, so let's just put on some more, get a thruster block right here. Let's just get four of these doodads right here and get another set up here. Let's just make sure these are synalogous, um, or analogous, rather. All right, here we go. And let's just drag them all the way up right here, and hopefully they are in the same place. If not, well, that would be very detrimental, and I'm lagging a bit here. I'm sorry. All right, let's see what, let's just put on some other cool stuff. Avionics package. What is this? Laser research and enable the development of this. Whoa. Quality sensors and computer. This, I, I could always use a good computer. Why not? Let's just stash this guy on our little stress right here. That'd be cool. And I do want to start on a moon base pretty soon. This, so this is a pretty good practice module because I think I'll be using a similar thing for it. Now let's just do one more integrity check. Now the, our wheels did break rather quickly on right there. So 
I want to see if there's any way I can just remodel this craft whatsoever just so it works really well at the surface of the mud. I mean, this thing already is pretty much a hunk of junk in reality. I mean, think about it. This thing is just a hunk of junk. <laughs> and I'm, I'm worried right here about this nice little decouple stage because the decoupler will be stuck on there. I mean, that's just a fact of the matter. So I'm wondering if I should put like a docking node and then that here. Let's try and work that out because that will be an issue. It might even be so much so where we can't go over a bump without getting stuck here. Let's just try and do a nice little symmetry mode. And then we can put a little docking port on the middle right there, I hope. And then stash this guy on so then we can decouple that and then we'll be good to go. I think that'll actually work out. Yeah, that'll look nice. That'll look nice. Let, oh, actually, no, something we should probably do is make sure the RCSs are lined up with the wings. So, you know, just to help with the steering a little bit. You know, oh, yeah, look at me in my hindsight. Check me out. All right, let's just stash these guys on right here. Mustache, cash stash. Now, where, where's the other? Where's where, where are the rest? Oh, here they are. All right, so just put these guys on round about right here. Get a nice magnified view of our RCS ports. Now, since we'll be ditching those tanks rather quickly, I really see no point of that. All right, let's just stash those guys on right there. I think this is looking good. Now, actually, you know what? So we do need is some or are some solar panels on our module right here. You know, the landing module just to make sure we have enough fuel for the job. Or not fuel, rather, electric electrical power. Yes, that is more politically correct. Alrighty, so let's just put two of these fellers on right now. No, that is four. Let's just try two. Can we try two? All right, I guess I guess the game doesn't really like two. Okay, whatever. Yeah, see, it keeps going to four for whatever reason. Huh. I guess that's something I've not quite learned yet. The forcible manner of putting on solar panels in quad formations. Actually, you know what? Something I should probably do. Should probably put on four or so of these mounted parachutes just to make sure that this thing comes down for a nice toasty landing. And I think that's looking good. Alrighty. I think we are about ready to save Bill, actually. Alright, so let's just make sure all these are nice and leveled. This is looking good. We are docking port. We've got our RCS thrusters. Actually, no, these are only on one side. We need to make these, we need to double them up, actually. I'm not sure why I haven't already done that. That, that is a bit of a fail right there. All right, so let's just line these guys up like nothing ever happened. We're actually just going to do the normal set right here. And I believe the other set, where, where are those doodads? They're around here somewhere. Ah, yes, right there. All right, so let's just knock this guy on right quick. No big deal right here. All right, look at this. This is looking good. And, you know, probably for some added measure just to make sure we have enough fuel. Um, we'll probably do it. Yeah, you know, let's just do a test launch right now. Let's just make sure. Let's save this up real quick. The Bill Rescuer Mark 1. And let's just do a test flight real quick just to see if this thing, you know, has enough uh, Delta V to get up into orbit, you know, without using too little or, like, without having too much power. Because while under 10,000 meters um, in the Earth's atmosphere, or Kerbin's in this case, it's extremely thick and you'll be wasting a lot of power if you... Oh, wow, look at those guys. They are flexing. Look at these. These uh, these guys are flexing more than bodybuilders. And something I actually probably should apply on our structural struts. But hey, this is all a part of the test. So actually, you know, let me try something. Let me just like, try and... All right, so I cannot decouple these guys. And that's actually what I wanted to test. Um, you know, uh, let's just go back and correct that real quick. Now, I can't decouple those for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why. That'd be really nice to come back on a return without them. You know, let me just look into these. If these are the same, I want to make sure because... Oh, wait, I think I did them inside out, actually. Yeah, I reckon those are inside out. And let me just add in some uh, support struts. Yeah, let me just... Let's uh, correct this real quick. So let's just snatch these out of here. And we will do a floop. And let's just flip them around right here. That is looking better, I believe. Here, let me just take a look. I need to make sure that these are the right way around. Oh, no more angle snap. That is going to make for an awkward docking port. All right, right there. Let's just make sure. Are these looking right? I'm not sure. Hang on a second. This looks right. I'm just not sure here. It, it's identical, I think. Or is it not? Let's try a different docking port. Let's just take a look real quick. I am probably being a noob. Everyone's probably shouting at me right now. I apologize. Um, oh, that's too big, I believe. Um, yeah, these are the ones we we're working with. But these have these nice little yellow stripes on. It's like, hey, dock here. That's, that's what that's shouting to me, honestly. I think that is what we need to be doing. Um, let's just snag these guys on right here. I, I really think that's probably what we should be doing. All right, so let's just put these fellers on right now. And we really need to bat down the hatches with these fellers. So let's just... Um, Get some support struts right here and snarl them on. Let's just put them like right here to this fuel tank so they don't be flexing or anything like that. And let's just put another one right up here. 
right hooked on to the mod. Actually, no, I do not want to do that because that would get in the way. All right, so this is looking good, and let's put on these support struts just so this thing is nice and level. And let's do our test fly. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's just put these on right here. And I think we're ready to go. Let's just save this guy up. And I'm not really going to worry about any of the um, beforehand, like the startups, like the... Um, the staging that's that's what i'm calling it i'll perfect that and we'll get it working it's just extra time and i just want to make sure this thing can get off the ground and it won't be an issue so we'll like see the we'll do our asparagus staging make sure everything works all righty so look at this thing it's not flexing as much anymore that now that we batten down the hatches on it and you know we probably need to bring these engines down right here all righty so let's just see these and decouples them all at the same time i'll have to work with that but let's just thrust up and let's lift off three two one <laughs> Actually, you know what? That does get a whole... That gets a good amount of thrust, actually. But, oh, I forgot to enable SAS. Okay, yeah, well... Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do indeed do test flights. Because this can and will happen. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, that's... That's something right there. Alright, well, I think we learned a valuable lesson about structure and whatnot. <laughs> Alright, so I'll perfect the staging and we'll be ready to go to the Mon to rescue Bill and or Bob. We'll have to do a poll just to see which one gets the lucky ticket off the Mon. Alright, now that's really all for this episode of Kerbal Space Program. I'll try and perfect this just to make sure it's all like looking well and the structures stick all together and we don't have an issue. But I'll see you guys next time.